So, this is it. This is the final episode for Partisan. I'll say final episode. I mean, final proper game. Because, of course, I'm going to have to do a series review and all those fun stuff. But, for the purposes of what is this beautiful save with this beautiful team, this is the final episode. And does it get better and bigger than this? Because we have a chance to win the Champions League. And even better, we have a chance to surpass Cervena Zvezda for the amount of Champions Leagues in Serbia. After this game, hopefully they will no longer be able to say that they've won more Champions League trophies than Partizan. And I hope that you guys will not be disappointed. As you guys will remember, we've been in the Champions League final three times, including this one. The first one we lost, the second one we won, the third one is now. And funnily enough, the team that has knocked us out in last year's Champions League run was this Real Madrid with Zinedine Zidane. To make things better, we have stole Valverde from them, who was a big thorn in our side. But this is Real Madrid, and they have managed to bring in some other players. They've managed to bring in Enciso, and they've managed to bring in Prime Anthony. And so in today's game, we'll be taking on Prime 2008 Anthony. <laughs> Hi guys, Mr. Space Report for Duty, and welcome back to Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. I think we have a chance, boys, because Anthony is out. He's not going to be playing today. Woohoo! Yeah, Anthony, Anthony, Anthony. Apparently, he's had well a long-lasting career with United, which is interesting. And for whatever reason, Real Madrid deemed it necessary to spend the money we spent on Valverde to replace him with. Anthony, and he's done okay. 16 appearances, 6 goals, 5 assists. I mean, to be fair, 6 of those were off the bench. So I'm not really sure what the thought process was here, especially considering that they brought in and Cizo, and they've loaned out Ossiman in return. I don't understand. What the hell are they thinking? Ossiman looks great, and he's been kicked out. So what's going on? Is Endrick leading the line? Rodriguez there, who's injured. Anthony's injured. Vinicius Jr. is injured. It's in the back, boys. It's absolutely in the bag. But before we get into this episode proper, and yes, I am milking for time, the first thing I want to mention is this is in fact the premiere, and I'm hoping I've been interacting with you. I'm hoping I've been a very good boy, and I'm actually in the chat talking to you guys, because unfortunately, I'm having some issues with uh, scheduling, if that's the right way to do it. I am going on holiday for about two, three weeks, so it's going to be a lot of times without videos for you guys, and it's perfect because this season ends today which is exciting, but I'm going away to Thailand for a few weeks, which is going to be hard to record videos. The only thing I'm going to be able to do is make a nice little compilation videos of all the cool stuff that has happened on this channel, on the safe, so it's something you get to look forward to and just basically do this. But hopefully I said hi. If I haven't said hi in the chat, you're allowed to write mean things, hopefully nice mean things, not like demonetize me memes, but just like... Bro, do better because this game deserves my full time. I'm I'm honestly, I'm gonna be on the bus somewhere. Hopefully the Wi-Fi is good. Basically, that's it. As you can see, I am extremely excited. I'm extremely nervous about this game and I'm yapping more than usual. And again, you're you're here for this, right? You're here for this, right? Please tell me in the comments if you're here for that. But anyways, I hope I'm having a nice time. I hope I'm chatting with you guys and I hope you guys are having a great time as well. But the second thing, and I guess actually I thought about the third thing as well, is that to prepare for this game, actually over the weekend, I did go and go through my first two sessions for the UEFA C courses, as you would have seen on YouTube. It's absolutely amazing, and I absolutely look smart. I have, my brain is growing, and I feel like I'm learning, so maybe that's something I'm going to implement now in this game. It'll be exciting. It's not that groundbreaking, but you know, <laughs> it's fun. I've leveled up. Maybe my stats are a bit better, but the third thing is that we have been on a very good run of form after defeating Inter Milan. Well, the first game was a little bit of um, a massacre, is probably the best way to say it. We beat Jelizin Char 7-1 in the last game, and the last time we're going to see them on this channel. And goals from Milovanovic, goals from Shukayev, Bolaños, Lachlan Deans, and Lemke was enough to put them away. Chukadichki 2-0, very, very simple. Super League final phase, yeah. Basically, that was it. Erling Haaland with a double, scored the first two goals, and then everyone just left. I don't think the game even finished the first half. They're just like, yeah, whatever, they're going to win anyway, so let's just stop playing. Spartak was dispatched 6-0. Haaland... Haaland scored five goals. Five. That's like three, but plus two. That's like four, but plus one. 
That's like five, but plus zero. Yeah, I, I don't know where I was going with this, but that's a lot of goals and I'm still shocked about it. Yeah, he scored a lot of goals, refused to elaborate and Spartak was very, very sad. Most importantly, we won the freaking cup final against TSC with goals from Saldania, our club legend, and Lockie Deans. 57th minute, absolutely amazing. And Vozdovats or Vozdovats were finally dispatched 4 1 in the last game of my Serbian final phase. I probably should have recorded that. It's going to be a little bit emotional because I am going to be missing the save. But hopefully, while I'm away, I will be able to play a lot of FM and just give you an update of hey, how much crazy stuff has happened whilst I was away. Hopefully, I'm gonna be able to play the save off camera and be like, hey, this is what I've managed to play through in a few seasons. And also, it'll be fun to see how you guys compare because obviously I'm gonna be making this save file available for you guys, both on YouTube and on Discord and the comments and whatever. But that's only gonna be in the next video, I think, or I'm gonna post it on, and uh, what's it called? On the community's chat. One of those things, I'm going completely insane because today is the UEFA Champions League final and I'm gonna keep hyping things up although it can't be too long because like I said um basically between five and six I'm traveling and that's enough time for me to you know actually be active and be present so as long as this video is not longer than an hour I can actually watch it till the end with you guys so it means I've got an hour to milk right can I just make it an hour long video would you watch an hour long video tell me in the comments but yeah as you guys remember we have gone on an amazing run that started all the way in the league phase. Oh my god, I was looking through all these things. We have not started in the league path or champions path for years. We have gone unbeaten, have not lost a single game, beaten every single team that we've managed to face. <coughs> Milan, go away. And we've managed to top the group with a record-breaking 22 points, at least for us. I don't know if anyone else has ever managed to do 22 points, and I don't know, I hope this doesn't keep resetting every time. It does... But so far, 20 points seems to be the max. Uh, Bayern Munich did one better. If you take over Partizan, please let me know if you managed to get 24 points. But after those wonderful performances, we've managed to miss all this crapshoot. We've managed to miss all the big teams fighting in for each other. We've managed to miss OM being knocked out, IX being knocked out, Bayer being knocked out. To be fair, nothing crazy. We did manage to see Crystal Palace not make it out, which is unfortunate. We don't get to see Hudikov in the further stages. Round of 16 was very, very simple. Bayern was knocked out. I think United was knocked out. and uh, Liverpool goes knocked out early. And where was my favorite AC Milan? They have struggled heavily against Benfica. And to be fair for that, they were punished with a victory against Paris Saint-Germain. Wait, Milan is doing good. I feel better now for having drawn against them. Fair enough. I guess they got knocked out in the semi-final. I... Do you know, sometimes, like, obviously, between the episodes I record, it's not too long. And I forgot that it was AC Milan versus Real Madrid. Puli Goat is Puli Goating. Is he still there? Is he still there? Are we still imagining him? Are we still not seeing him? Where is the American mad lad? Oh. No, he's, he's gone and done what every single top player does. Um, go and secure the bank at um, Saudi for a million, a million pounds a week. I still can't get over the fact that it's so much money. And he's not even killing it over there. I don't understand. And he still looks very good. I mean, what else can I say? We've played Real Madrid already in this season, like I said. We've managed to beat them 1-0 with a goal from Estevao in the UEFA Champions League, but Real Madrid are looking a little bit weaker. Like I said, no Rodrigo, no Anthony, and no Vinicius Jr. Even better, no Osiman. So that's gonna be a lot of good players not playing, but that makes it sad because Ivan Illich is there for them and Stamanich is there as well. And most importantly, Kukurea is still at the club somehow. But the most important thing, I think we have a great chance. I don't know if Endrick is as good as I think he is. He hasn't done well for them. Flash forward to him scoring a hat-trick against me, but he hasn't impressed for them. He hasn't developed as much for them as he probably should. I don't know if he got 200 PA in this save. In the real world, he's doing absolutely incredible, but here he's just okay. So not even a single cap for Brazil which is wild. But yeah, enough talking about Real Madrid. Let's talk about real partisan 
because we are the best and we are the real deal. Okay, that was the worst tie-in I think I've ever done in my entire life. But this is your starting lineup and this is hopefully your second Champions League winning boys in partisan colors. First of all, Lucas Gabriel is going to be back for this game. He's going to take over from Ederson, who has kind of disappointed me. And it's time for the, well, the young man, the 22-year-old, although to be fair, not that young anymore, keeper to stand up, show himself to the world, and take over from Ederson and take over from Allison to be the next Brazilian wonder kid. But Bayes is going to be on the left. Lukeba, Lemke, and Teklak will be your back four. The midfield three will be Gavi, Valverde, and Deans. Basically the best of both worlds. We've got a player from Real Madrid. We've got a player from Barcelona. And we get a world-class player from Partizan in the midfield three. And they're learning to play together. And they love each other. And I love that for them. And up front, it's going to be Milovanovic. Esteval, the match-winning player that he is. Scoring the big goal against Real Madrid. And finally, hopefully, what Real Madrid is lacking. A true goal scorer in Erling Braut Haaland. Because as you remember, in my save... Mbappe is still flopping at PSG. Although, next year, my goal is to try and sign him. Let's scout him. Anywho, this is my starting lineup. Every single person on my team is currently wanted by another big team. But surely, if you win the second Champions League in three years, and pretty much the third? Or is it the third final in four years? Something like that. Surely, finally, we'll be the best team in Europe because for now we are the 11th best team in the world which is not that bad to be fair we are somewhere at the bottom and hopefully by beating Real Madrid that will be enough in terms of coefficients however we are the second best team we are the third best team apparently I actually thought we were second never mind you should probably look what you're talking about before you actually start yapping as always wasting for time I love it absolutely crazy but yeah we are in fact third and hopefully by just 100%, what is the coefficient? 166, what is the total coefficients? I think it's this. I think as long as we win the damn thing this time, and as long as Real Madrid don't win it, I think we'll be the best team this year. Because that puts us first. But I don't know how much it gets you for winning the Champions League. Surely it has to be higher than being basically almost unbeaten this whole year. I guess we lost to Inter Milan. But yeah, this is the kind of things that's on the board. And this is the kind of thing that we have to do. We are playing against a very, very good Real Madrid side. We are basically only missing Bolaños, unfortunately, who's out for a few months, I think. And they're missing three key players. Hopefully that's going to be enough. I hope you're excited. Smash the like button. If you're watching this live while I'm yapping with you, please Hit the comments, go down to the bottom as well and just write some nice stuff as always. It's obviously good. Spam it, make this video massive. It's the final episode you guys are going to be seeing in a game, which is I'm really excited for. And I hope you guys are here for the win against Real Madrid. I can't wait. Let's just jump into it and let's freaking destroy them. Okay, so I just looked and I looked a little bit dark and I didn't mean to. But now we have the power of light and Real Madrid is going to be absolutely obliterated. They're playing Andrik, they're playing Enciso, they're not playing Stamenich, which is absolutely awful. But Enciso, a a, basically a player that we've just discarded, we're like, we don't want you, we don't care about you, please leave. He's playing against us in the Champions League final. And we know what's going to happen. We know what the FM script writers are going to do. We know what the FM gods are like. They're going to be like, you know what? And Cizo, man of the match performance, he's going to be scoring, he's going to be clearing goals, he's going to be doing absolutely everything he can to make sure that I regret it. And I'm going to make sure that I do everything, and by everything, I mean just chat through this whole time. Not a single edit will pass through this freaking video because I want to be in the moment. I want you to see my craziness. I want to I want to just basically vibe with you guys. I hope you're having a great time, by the way. And like I said, I hope I'm chatting back to you. If I'm not, that's going to be a little bit embarrassing. And uh, yeah, if I'm not, I'm doing it now. And first things first, Lachlan Deans is injured. But that's not the most important thing because we have our first chance. Not a single highlight has happened before. And this is our first chance as Beas puts in an awful cross and Cizo clears. Beas is back again on the ball. I'm excited. You're excited. And Andres Beas runs one on the keeper. He scores a goal. Fourth goal of the season. And he scores it in the biggest stage. The former Chukarichki Vozdovac Vojvodnaya... Wait, where is he from? I mean, he's, he's already one of our own. That's the most important thing. He is from Radnički. Man, I did not list enough Serbian teams. They're Radnički, man. Who would have thought the Spanish 
Don't forget, he is Spanish. He is Serbian Spanish, born in Petrovac na Mlavi, not the most Spanish place I know. He speaks lots of languages, by the way. He has managed to score what in my head is his homegrown club, or maybe he's an Atletico Madrid fan, like a certain person on this um, YouTube channel as well. Uh, Gusi, say hi. Uh, we were beating Real Madrid. I hope you're having a great time if you're watching this. But oh my God, Andres Beas puts in a cross, an awful cross, and that's because he was playing 6D chess. He knew what he was doing. He wanted to score himself. He's not here to set up the glory for other people. And yes, I am trying to yap my way through it because I understand the Lachlan Deans is injured and I don't want to take him off. Although it might be like Ronaldo in the Euros in 2016 when he comes off, he's crying. He wants to motivate the team. He wants to be there. And unfortunately, he just isn't. And to be fair, there's nothing much I can say about this game apart from the fact nothing has happened. Andres Beas is our only person who has actually made a single change here. But the real question is, if you're here in the comments, tell me right now, am I making a mistake by keeping Lachlan Deans on? Am I making a mistake by keeping Lachlan Deans on? I could do something silly. I could bring in Esteval for Deans and I can put Saldana to be the player that is on the pitch when he win the second Champions League. He's won it once. I don't remember if he was present in the previous time we played there. Maybe he was injured. I'm not really sure. Let's see. Did he make an appearance? I don't think he did. He wasn't on the pitch when he won it. Was he on the pitch when he lost it? Yeah, he made an appearance here. So he needs to make an appearance today. I need to not forget to do it. And if I forget to do it, just please give me all the hate in the comments. I get enough hate and I get enough flashback memory, awful things from... Remember when that decision, when someone was telling me in the comments, bring on Antic instead of... What's his face? Um, the left back, Ait Nuri. Remember that? Remember? Remember you were telling me, bring on the legend 47 himself, bring him on for penalties or whatever and let him score against Barcelona. And I brought in Ait Nuri. And that caused us a loss, which was absolutely heartbreaking. But basically, I'm pretty sure I've talked through this halftime more than I've actually talked through during the game because this is a very quick game. I think both teams are trying to shut each other out. Nothing is happening um, are we just going to settle in for 1-0 here? Apparently, the game thinks, let's bring some more excitement. We have a highlight 10 minutes in. Look at me spoiling my viewers. As Milovanovic finds Castellano, or Castello. I'm making up names right now. I'm too nervous and I'm too embarrassed. Beas finds Milovanovic. Is Beas going to be the match winner? Is he going to be the player that changes the game? Out of every world-class player, out of every person that we spend millions on, is he going to be the one that makes the difference? Holland, though, will he make a run? Will he score in the Champions League final? And Deans is a tactical decision by me to keep him on, has created this chance and brought Erling Haaland to win the Champions League for us, unless we collapse. Is it early? Is it too early to celebrate? Is it too early to celebrate? My heart says yes, but also my heart says no. Wait, no, my brain says no. Yes, it's too early. My heart says no. Erling Haaland slots it away. Bottom left corner. Messlier could do nothing. Real Madrid are looking toothless. And we have all sorts of teeth. We're like a shark. If you break the teeth, more teeth will come out. And that's pretty much signified by the fact that we do have the many subs that we do. I am extremely pleased with this. This is amazing. Although if you were actually a player that watched this game, like if you actually spent a lot of money on it, you would be a little bit disappointed. But who cares? As the 75th minute is rolling up and I still did not manage to shut up, is it time to let Deans go and clap him off the pitch? I think the answer is yes. Let's put on Lavia. Let's switch him with Gavi. Gavi will be our Mazala again. Esteval is going to come off. Saldana is going to make his appearance on the pitch of the Champions League final. I can't believe he's made it with us all the way from the start of the save and he hasn't left to a random Hungarian team like he has in real life. <sighs> I'm so sad. I feel like my next save will be with Ferenc Varos because I cannot imagine my life without Saldana. I generally cannot, but that is not it. Do we make any more subs? Fede is still there. Fede is injured as well and he's knocked, which is not very good, but there's 75 minutes left. Let's... Give some more time here. Let's chill out. They're playing with a 4-4-2. They're playing with Kukurea as a wide playmaker. What the hell is Zidane doing? What's the opposite of cooking? Uh, baking? He's not doing either. 
cooking is on the opposite of baking. What, what am I on about? Baking is awesome. Cooking is awesome. And I'm doing both. As Lavia finds Gavi, who'll be happy to wipe the smile off Real Madrid's faces. And by the way, I do like Real Madrid, so don't forget that. Morgala, though, is going to find Truomeni. And Stamenic is on. Oh, Lord, he's coming. And oh, Lord, he got dispossessed. I feel so bad. It's just the level that we are. Like, Stamenic would not make it. And I know for a fact that next season, I will probably sign Lavia. Lavia? Probably sign Stamenic for my own safe because I want to win the Champions League with him. But Saldana, find some space on the right-hand side. Can you cut in, my son? Can you cut in? Finds Fede who gets blocked and Stamenic clears. Somebody tells Stamenic he's playing for us. He's playing for the medal. Unfortunately, he's not going to get it today. And it's time for me to... Just bring some silly players on. Is it time to do that? I think so. Let's bring in Shikayev, who does not look like a player who should be playing in the Champions League final. But we don't care. What else should we do? Do we go insane? I think we take off Holland and we bring on Zdravkovic as well, because he's definitely not played it before. And we're going to take off uh, Beas and we're going to put on Sasa Serenic. And Beas is going to be clapped off because he definitely started this beautiful game for us today it's a beautiful day everyone is absolutely happy you can start celebrating you can let your flares off we know what the result is going to be they're not going to do enough in time we are going to praise the boys and we're going to win the champions league let's freaking go it's not over yet but it is now and we've done it in our final game of the save in our final proper game of the save we have done it we have surpassed Cervena Zvezda I am shouting I'm sorry if you have earphones I am really sorry Locky Deans though is Walking like a tank, and he makes a beautiful lift, and he's done it! He's done it! Was it Hudikov that lifted it last time? I think so. This time, it's the Mohawk legend, Lockie Deans, like this. Absolutely amazing. The Champions League trophy looks good. I'm just clapping. The boys are vibing. The boys are having a good time. The boys, the boys are having a good time, and every other person is as well. And once again, I am so disappointed that nothing exciting happens when you win the champions league it's like cool you get a highlight and that's it but we have done it 2-0 against real madrid yes absolutely i realize i know for a fact that we were lucky because we've taken our chances and the players that they had well they didn't have good players they're all injured and even Fede Valverde had a bad game because he's like oh i'm playing for real madrid today no son you're not you're winning the champions league with us today absolutely incredible what does that make it for you i have absolutely no idea why i'm looking at injuries i am insane career stats how many things has he won already well he's won it last year oh he's won it last year back to back champions league winners let's freaking go and since he's joined well i guess european football he's won da, 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 one champions league um one champions what? Seriously? Two? Three? He's won three Champions Leagues. Wait, was he not part of the all the amazing Champions League runs with Zidane? I swear he was. Anywho, um, yeah, he won the Champions League with us. That's amazing. Let's freaking go, boys. It was thanks to Andres Beas that we have managed to win the Champions League. And I know you guys are going crazy in the chat. And I know you guys are vibing and having the best time of your lives. Of course, you're having the greatest day of your lives. And so am I. Champions League has won. Holland, which is funny. Holland has scored a goal for Partizan, which is absolutely amazing. We're happy to see him score in a big game. And not just behind me clicking on schedules and being like, hey, he scored. Remember remember the five goals against, uh, was it Jelesinchar? No, it was against, no, it was against Spartak. Remember the five goals there? Yeah, you don't get to see it. It's just stats. But no, you got to see this one. We celebrate a famous treble once again for the second time in three years, which is awesome. Zidane is pissed off. Deans has bruised his ankle. That's not really a bad injury. I can't believe I almost subbed him early because he bruised his ankle. We made 17.14 million because we won the bloody thing. And the most important thing is... Uh, when the hell is this? It's going to be in 2033. Why? What? Hmm. When did I... When did I win it last? Because I've seen this before. I won the Champions League. Wait, 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 wait. I won the Champions League in... 
in this season. Ah, I see. So I won it in this season, but because I didn't win it in the previous season with Barcelona, I didn't qualify for the Club World Championship, but now I've won it. There's going to be one in 2033. So hopefully that's when I'm going to see you guys next in terms of like my fast forward into the future. That's only two years, basically. So hopefully I can cover two years in two weeks. I mean, I am going on holiday at the same time as visiting family. So yeah, I guess that's going to be something we do. Valverde is injured for one to two days. Man, just say you're hungover. Like genuinely, I will not find you. Just say you're hungover. You don't want to come into training because we don't want to have training anyways. Well, okay, we have recovery and match review. Should I just give him a rest? Should I just give him a rest? You know what? Where is it? Rest. And rest. You guys just, whatever. You're in, we're in Baku. Enjoy yourself. Maybe see a F1 race or something. Enjoy the city. The city is beautiful. And go and hang out. And we have managed to get 33 medals. We managed to get 33 medals. And the most important thing, I did not realize it. Saldana had two appearances only this run. And he's leaving. Well, he's not leaving yet. But he's won it for the second time in three years. And I guess if I didn't play him more than once, he would not have gotten it. Pedromo and Racic got it as well, which is wild. And players like Potlagiano, Tashic, Barna, Saldana, and Muratchev, and obviously all the players that actually made more frequent appearances, have managed to win it as well. And the wildest thing actually here that I see is Bolaños did not get a single start for me. I am awful. Even Perdanovic, he went to Barcelona... And he gets a medal for the Champions League. That's wild. You know what? You deserve it. You deserve it for sure. But most importantly, a lot of our players just have vibed and have played amazingly. Who was the best player? Of course, Erling Haaland. And closely followed by Lockie Deans with 10 goals. Ooh, Champions League review time. I mean, I was going to leave it for next time. But because Haaland scored it. In this game, he becomes a top goal scorer. We have a top goal scorer for the first time ever in the Champions League. And we have Lockie Deans, who's the second player, which is amazing. And most assists go to Rashford, Ojeda, and Navarro. And um, Graham Owen. And not a single one of our players. Not even most player of the matches. Hmm. Well, in terms of best clean sheets, uh, Lucas Gabriel made a late run to the party with getting a third clean sheet. If he had some more, he would have been on top, but it's currently won by Slimani, Hurado, Melikov, and Ramsdale. Uh, okay, f fair enough. But apart from that, guys, we have done it. Is there anything else I want to see? Anything else I want to tell you guys about? Um, award winners? No, I probably... Player of the season should go to Erling Holland. We're going to find that out on the 31st. Hmm. Do you know what? Let me go a little bit forward. And I'm actually going to make a proper cut. Let me go a bit forward and actually see if we get any awards. Because I know sometimes we do. Sometimes they give them out early. And sometimes they give it before the end of season review. And that way I can actually just finish this Champions League stuff right now and then leave the other cool end of, you know, the, the end of my partisan career where we're going to hit uh, retire immediately. It's just going to be awful and sad. But yeah, we have managed to do it. The board is pleased. The board is excited. We are a true partisan legend. We won it twice, which is once more than Ser Servina's, Servina's Vesda. Oh my God, I'm actually going to say I was going to say Sabrina's Vesda. Like, Sabrina the... Um, the teenage witch. Um, I'm going crazy. So let me take a tiny break for me. For you guys, I'll just be absolutely incredible. And then I'll move on and show you guys if there's any cool things coming from the Champions League. So let's see if there is. Perfect. There we go. All I have to do is wait for one day. And it's insane that it is this person, Lachlan Deans, that got player of the season in the UEFA Champions League. That is insane. He scored, well, he's had 13 appearances, scored 10 goals, had two assists, had an average rating of 7.43, and he has managed to displace freaking uh, Kylian Mbappé. Although, to be fair, by, by a long shot, he was not as good as um, 
Well, Lachlan Deans was this year. I guess who got the young player this season? It was given to Graham Owen, so we don't get back-to-back -back youth players. Sasa Serenic and Milovanovic are, I guess, no longer young. And the best player goes to Graham Owen, who... Yeah, fair enough. He looks absolutely insane. And I'm going to maybe try and sign him. Maybe him or Mbappe. Ooh. Ooh, chat. Ooh. Who do I go for? Do I go for the 22-year-old? Or do I go for Kylian Mbappe? On one hand, it's going to be stupidly meme to see Mbappe and Holland. On the other hand, Greya Owen could be the future. Hmm. What are you guys thinking? Hmm. I will definitely see some comments and I will probably leave that for, for the future where I'll be able to see what the hell is going on and what the hell you guys are planning, well, telling me to do. And maybe I'll do it in my own, like, not in rebuilding part, as in like 10 years, five years in the future, I'll be doing that. But I want to know what you guys think. Best goal. No one cares about it. Dream team. We finally have, oh, wait, can you actually see it? Hang on. My face is blocking it. Is there a better way to show this? Is there a better way to show this? Okay, well, first of all, I think that's a bit better. Holland is there. As you guys can see, my face is blocking his face, so fair enough. But finally, we are being respected as a great team that we are because Teklak, Lemke, Lukeba, Valverde, Deans, Holland, and Costa, I'm still not bitter about the fact that they stole them, are the best players in the freaking dream team team is there any more players on the bench do they even put players on the bench the answer is no and as you can see holland is here and rodrigo is here okay scoring seven goals but we have bossed this but Daji looks good let's got him as well sorry going a little bit of a tangent here and finally <clears throat> did anyone question this erling holland who was signed for like 200 million is the best freaking player and has gotten the golden boot which we're gonna congratulate him on and I think we're going to congratulate Lockie Deans on winning this as well. This was the longest end to the episode that I've ever seen. And for those of you that have stayed, I appreciate it. Uh, tell me if you have stayed, by the way. And if you left more than one comment, keep leaving the comments, man. The more comments you leave, the more interaction I get, the more we grow, the more cool things I can do. And at some point, this will grow further and beyond just... Well, just what I do. This is fun. I love it. Absolutely insane. This is how everything looks like. I will be doing another episode. I'm not sure when. But yeah, hopefully I'll manage to get the last episode out in time. There's not much time. I'm literally leaving on Saturday super early. So it's going to be something we need to think about. And if I manage to get it out quick enough, we will see you on Monday potentially. And then after that, I'll go on a little bit of a break. So if you want to see more partisan fixes, please go and watch the old videos. Leave comments. Be like, hey, I came from the future. Don't spoil it for the people that are finding this. Just be like, hey, you're in for some good stuff. And if you're just joining it, this is probably the best time to join it. Go all the way back. There's like 95,000 episodes to watch. And they're all just as good as this one. But actually, I'll be honest. This was the best episode I've recorded. And if you think so, please tell me in the comments. Anyways, it's time for me to finish this. It's time for my final game of the season, of the save, of partisan and definitely next year i'm not going to be doing a partisan save maybe at some point in the future i will definitely do another one i don't want to do it every single year i like this team i love you guys you're being amazing you're supportive it's just i can't be doing this every single time because it'll just feel like an um what's it called it won't feel <sighs> real you know i won't feel the same excitement i have this where if i play with the same teams over and over again i don't care and I do want to be able to be like, remember Andres Bayas, remember Milovanovic, remember Stanic for God's sake, 2021 FM, go and watch it. We had club legends there as well. And, but this time we did what we couldn't do last time. And we did it twice over. I, I don't know, man. Maybe when I'm back, maybe when I'm back from, from my holiday, I will do one more episode as a final hurrah because at this rate, FM25 is going to release in 200 years and I don't really know or care <laughs> and I might have to do this for another year of this game. I don't even know. But anyways, I hope you had a fantastic time. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for all the love and support and whatever. I'm really grateful that you guys are spending your time with me and bringing all this cool stuff to my life. And I'm really, really happy and vibey. And before I start crying and getting absolutely emotional, I want to wish you the very best. I will be obviously seeing you guys. I'll be promising to continue next year. I'll be here. 
just with a different team. Keep thinking about what team you want me to play with next year. I'll be putting up polls in the future. I'll be doing some other cool things. And like I said, this is only going to be bigger and better as time goes on because of you guys. And with that, let's sign off on the fact that we are the Champions League winners. Nobody expected us to be here, but we managed to do it. Anyways, have a great time. I'll see you in a while. Hopefully my holidays are going to be absolutely good. And hopefully yours are as well. Bye, guys.